welcome back to another true story animation. This is another story about conjoined siblings. I'm not quite sure what the internet's obsession is with conjoined twins or siblings, but there seems to be one for some reason. Apart from this story today is not about conjoined twins. This one is actually about conjoined triplets. Now, can you imagine sharing your body with two other people? Imagine if you hated those people. That would probably be one of the worst lives you could live. I'm trying to hit 5 million subscribers, so if you could subscribe and turn on notifications, that would make my day. Also, make sure to leave a like on this video, otherwise tomorrow when you wake up, you'll be conjoined to Freddy Fazbear. Hi, my name is Amy. Hi Amy. My sisters and I are triplets but not in the way you'd imagine. What other ways can we imagine? Ah, oh, yes, of course, they're conjoined. Why is one of them lower down than the other two? That poor girl. We are conjoined siblings. My sister's names are Elena and Anna. Yes, my parents thought it'd be cute to give us all names starting with A. Oh, I actually didn't even realize that, but yeah, that is kind of cool. I'll be telling you the struggles we went through and how my sister Anna is ruining Elena and my lives. Can you seriously imagine that they're being trapped in the same body as somebody who's trying to ruin your life? They won't be telling their sides of the story, so don't expect to hear them in this video. Okay. Elena is too shy to talk about all this mess, and Anna is the one creating this whole chaos. I don't want to hear her talking at all. Well, you, you kind of do have to hear her talking because you are connected to her. You'll have to hear her all day. That's probably all you can hear. Your sister's talking to you because they're literally next to you at every single moment. That would drive me crazy. My mom and dad never saw our unique condition coming. The pregnancy was perfectly normal. Why does the scan show there's only one baby when there's actually three? And the doctors assured mom she was only expecting one baby. Apparently, oh my sisters were hiding behind my head the few times she underwent an echography. Ah, okay. Though she did check with doctors to make sure we were okay and took us to the pediatrician as we grew up. She usually avoided the hospital as often as possible. Perhaps if mom had visited the doctor more regularly, they would have discovered the truth earlier. I'm not sure it would have made much of a difference though. Nothing prepares people to deal with conjoined twins, let alone triplets. My parents had the room prepared Aww. for the arrival of their firstborn, but things were not going to be so easy. Mom wanted to deliver us in some kind of natural birth, but that ended up being impossible. We oh wouldn't dear. come out. How could we? If we had three heads and a single body, so the doctors had to perform an emergency C-section. Mom tried to refuse for as long as possible, but she gave in when she was told her baby's life was at stake. I cannot imagine giving birth to a three-headed baby. Like, I don't think the baby would be physically able to come out, so I totally understand why the mom had to have a C-section. It makes sense. Imagine the doctors and nurses surprised oh when they saw my sisters and me for the first time. It's a three-headed baby! I also think it's really cool though because it's just so unique and they will have a life experience that not that many people have. Three heads and three necks shared a single body. We all cried at the same time, oh or gosh. so my mom claimed. She said she was shocked and asked what was going on. The doctors didn't know what to say. Having three heads on a baby was almost unheard of. There were plenty of cases of conjoined twins, but triplets were a real oddity. I actually wonder if there's been many cases of conjoined triplets. I must search this immediately. Only three cases of true conjoined triplets have been found. That is so rare. It was hard, but they broke the news to my parents. They couldn't believe that anything like that could actually happen to them. The truth of the matter is, my parents tried their best. They were expecting a healthy daughter and received three babies in the same body. We demanded far more attention and had to endure surgery at a really early age. Oh, that's sad. My parents tried to find a potential solution to our problem, but there was no way to separate us. The way that they're connected is basically that it's one body with two extra heads. So yeah, they can't really be separated because the other two heads, I guess, don't have a body and they would die. We shared all the same vital organs, except our brains. We were born with an extra arm and a larger body, but other than that, the rest of our body worked as any other person would. Oh, this makes sense now. Earlier, I was so confused at why the other sister was lower down. She has her own arm. So each of them could control one arm, but with the legs, I guess I have to share. So there was no possibility to cut us apart. Growing up with this condition was super hard. You might think that the other two heads weren't fully formed or something, but that's not the case. We are three entirely separate people. It's just that we live in the same body. We each have our own personalities, preferences, likes, and dislikes. 
Imagine growing up constantly around someone else, 24-7, without any chances of being alone, even for a few seconds. I would hate that. I would literally hate everything about that. I really enjoy coming back at the end of the day, sitting in my room, and rotting alone. I don't want somebody there bothering me. Never mind, two heads on my shoulders trying to tell me how their day's been. I don't want to know. We were connected in every sense of the word. My parents had to buy a special bed for us, as well as custom-made clothes. You can figure out why none of the regular outfits a kid would wear could fit us. That makes sense. We had three whole heads and three arms we needed to fit into the dresses and shirts. Wait a second, they also have different eye colors. The sister in the middle has purple eyes, but the other two have brown eyes. So no matter what we used, it always had to be made especially for us. I'm grateful my parents didn't struggle financially, since that is probably what allowed us to have a decent life. If they hadn't been able to provide for us, we might not have lived for long, or at least not lived well. My mom and dad loved us dearly, Aww. even if it was clear they were in over their heads. They didn't know how to handle babies, and then kids and teenagers with three heads and three distinct personalities. Everything was harder for us than a regular child. Sleeping was a struggle, making friends was a struggle, studying was a struggle, even bathing, eating, and going to the bathroom was a whole long and complicated process. So if we look at this screen here, they all have a plate of food each, but like there's only one body, so do they eat three times as much? Plus, I didn't get along at all with one of my sisters, oh, Anna. No. If you have siblings, try to imagine being glued to your sister or brother all the time, them being by your side every single second of the day. If you don't, replace it with your best friend. No matter how much you might like them, you'd grow frustrated after a day or two. Exactly. That would be super annoying. We didn't have to endure that just a handful of days. It was our entire life. Now, even the sister I like, Elena, gets on my nerves from time to time. I imagine the same happens to her. Being with Anna, meanwhile, is always a nightmare. I love Elena to bits. But Anna is another story altogether. I wonder why she really dislikes his other sibling. It's not often that siblings hate each other. And the fact that she said she loved her other sister but not the other one really has me confused. What did she do? Growing up, we all had really different personalities. Elena was always really quiet and loved to read. She's super shy and rarely speaks to strangers. She preferred being alone, or as alone as you can be with two siblings sharing your body. Anna was super short-tempered, and she got angry so suddenly we never knew when it was coming. It was hard enduring her temper tantrums and her cruel streak. Plus, she was really nasty toward people, and the few friends we had hated her too, so it became super hard keeping any friendships growing up. What's worse, we always had to do what she wanted. If Elena wanted to stay in and read her books, but Anna preferred going outside, you can imagine who'd win. Oh no. Anna would make sure to be super loud and really annoying just to get her way. So Elena tried to read, and Anna would close the book, punch my other sister or me, or just scream and talk nonstop until we gave up. Honestly, they should just cut her off. I'm kidding, that would be awful, but also, like, it's just an idea. Then she was in a super good mood again. She was incredibly spoiled and selfish. I am the one in the middle of Elena and Anna, so I try my best to be sort of a buffer between them. I'm far more laid back and prefer to simply chill and have a good time. I think we already have enough problems to deal with as it is. We Very don't need true. to add drama and arguments into our lives. The problem was that, with time, Anna's faults didn't get better. They got worse. Oh no. Far worse. How? My sister didn't allow us to do anything she didn't feel like doing. So if we needed to get homework done and she wanted to play, She'd throw water on our folders, or write all over our papers. The other two are just trying to live a nice, peaceful life, and meanwhile, that sister Anna? She's out to destroy. If we wanted to watch a movie she didn't like, she'd scream so we couldn't hear. We'd always end up giving up because she simply wouldn't stop. No matter how much we tried to reason with her, she kept it up. Even when Elena sobbed or explained how much her attitude upset us, she seemed not to care about our needs or preferences. Everything was about her, and she acted out constantly, she always wanted to be the center of attention and would make up the most ridiculous stories. She is a literal nightmare. She had gotten us in so much trouble with the teachers by the time we got to high school that my parents had to actually find a new school for us. Oh no. Things did not get better after that. On the contrary, she began doing cruel, crazy stuff and then blaming it on either Elena or myself. Oh my gosh. She would destroy a student's cell phone and then say it was Elena for no good reason. Then she'd scribble all over the tables and say I had been the one to do it. She once even clogged the toilet on purpose and cut Elena's hair while both of us slept. 
I managed to wake up before she got to me. Why is she so evil? What did the other two sisters do to deserve such a horrible, horrible conjoined triplet? Imagine how hard it is to ground a child that is misbehaving when their siblings are attached to her. Oh, no. My parents couldn't punish only Anna for her cruelty without us also suffering. So if Anna couldn't watch TV or have dessert, we had to endure the same punishment. That's so cruel. Anna would taunt us about it, finding glee in denying us nice things, even if she had to go without it as well. My sister Anna was the one in charge of our left arm and leg, so you can imagine how messy that got. Until we turned 17, she had been nasty, but not dangerous. Then everything began to change. Ooh. We were about to cross the street when the traffic light changed. We stopped, waiting for the cars to stop speeding past us, when I felt someone trying to push us forward. Oh no! At first, I thought someone was behind us, but then I realized it was my own body that was moving. Is this sister about to try and get everyone killed? Because it seems that way. Or at least, it was the left side of my body. Anna was no. trying to walk straight into traffic. Elena and I screamed at her to stop. We actually had to throw ourselves back and fall to the floor in order to stop her. She was absolutely insane. Elena and I decided to speak to our parents, and we told her everything that Anna had done and said that day. They were really worried, of course, but they didn't want to pick favorites. Mom and Dad loved us all equally, and they didn't think Anna was evil. They just thought she was troubled. So they sent us to talk to a shrink. I hope I could say that this improved our relationship, but it only made it worse. Anna was furious that we had told on her and was determined to ruin our lives completely. You'd have thought that therapy would have helped her, but apparently no, she's just crazy and now she's angry. She began doing everything in her own power to mess with us. While we were walking down the street, she'd scream foul things at people around us. She didn't allow us to sleep in peace, waking the two of us in the middle of the night by making loud noises or forcing us to sit up. She literally has a microphone in the bed right now and she's singing while her sisters are trying to sleep. She's so cruel. She would refuse to clean her hair and taking a shower became such a struggle. If it was hard before, now it was almost impossible. Whenever Elena and I tried to study, she'd mess with us and taking exams became harder than ever. Still, we somehow managed to graduate from school. Elena wanted to go to college, but I can't imagine Anna letting us do that. Oh no. Anna has been making sure our every second with her is a living nightmare. And what's worse, Elena and I can't escape. She even hurts us when we are sleeping, so we can't even enjoy a nice rest without stressing about her messing with us. That is so sad. I really don't know how the situation is going to be solved. That got real sad, actually. I wasn't expecting that. I thought this was going to be a nice story about some conjoined triplets, but no, one of them is incredibly evil. But now we have a bonus story. I wonder what this could be about, so let's watch it, because it's a surprise to me. Finally, it was here. Our last day of school. Yeah! Samantha was my best friend. We had been friends since our first day at school when we were five years old. It would feel strange not seeing her every day. But Samantha was starting a job at our local grocery store, and I was about to start my own business. We had the whole world ahead of us. Wow. But then, the unthinkable happened, and I ended up in a coma. How did she end up in a coma? I must know immediately. I remember my first day at school. I was so nervous as I waved goodbye to mom at the school gates. Bye, darling, said mom. Have a wonderful day. I found my classroom and sat next to a blonde-haired girl. She looked just as scared as me. Ew, I'm so scared on my first day of school. I'm Tina. What's your name? I asked her. Samantha? She replied. We were best friends from that moment Be on. Fast. We did everything together. Told each other what? all our secrets, who we had a crush on, etc. Sometimes we liked the same boy, but we never fell out over it. We were both happy whenever something good happened to the other one. Like the time we both went for the lead role in the school production of Cinderella. The head of the drama department told everyone that the cast list would be on the notice board after school. Samantha and I joined the crowd gathered in front of the notice board. I love how this art style is so anime. Like, I'm here for it. It's hilarious. Congratulations, Dina, said Carl. You got the lead role, and I'm Prince Charming. I was so happy. I turned to look at Samantha. At first, I thought she oh, looked no. angry, but she smiled at me. Oh. That's fantastic, Tina, she said. I'm so happy for you. She Maybe sure looks it. year of high school, I told Samantha what I wanted to do when I left school. I wanted to open my own business. I'd been working on a new invention for about six months, and finally, it was starting to take off. That was an awesome reference to the Powerpuff Girls. I love that. I had rented a warehouse and had made a prototype. I felt so proud of my new business. You're probably wondering what my product was. Yes. And when you hear about it, you'll probably 
Who left. Is it? But I was proud. I had invented a pizza shaped shoe. Who's wearing that? Like seriously, who's wearing that? I want to know when I want to speak to them. I knew that everyone would love it once they saw it. Really? Every night after school, I went to the warehouse and worked on the production. When me and Samantha walked out of the school gates for the final time, I felt so excited for the future. I'll call you when I get home, Samantha. I said, I'm going to the warehouse. Okay, Samantha said as she ran off to catch the bus home. I worked on my pizza-shaped shoe for a couple of hours. I was so happy with it, it was exactly what, what I had heck? imagined. I climbed up the ladder to put it safely away, but as I reached the top, I suddenly felt dizzy. Everything went black and oh, I no. fell from the ladder, banging my head hard on the floor. Okay, now I understand why she's in a coma, because she was climbing up a ladder in her warehouse. This warehouse isn't very safe, is it? That's how I ended up in hospital in a coma. Oh, for three years. Three years? Of course I didn't know anything about about it. My poor family took it in turns, but they never left me alone. Someone was always by my bedside, so in sad. case I woke up. I could hear voices around me, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. I could hear machines beeping, too. I opened my eyes. The light was so bright it dazzled me. Where was I? Doctor! Doctor! Tina's waking up! I recognized the voice. She's it was awake. my mom talking. I looked at her and smiled. Where am I? What happened? I asked. That's when mom told me everything. I had been in a coma for three years. My mom gosh. told me how they had gone to the warehouse looking for me when I didn't come home. They had found me lying on the floor at the bottom of the ladders. I was unconscious. They had brought me to the hospital. The what? doctors had warned them that I might never wake up, but they never gave up hoping for a miracle. What is going on here? The art style, it's killing me. It's so funny. I couldn't believe it. Oh. But what about my business? I cried. I was just starting out. No, the pizza shaped shoe was going to take over the world. Mom told me I had nothing to worry about. In fact, I had a lot to be happy about. You see, whilst I had been in a coma, Mom and Dad had continued my business idea. It was a huge success. Oh, Everyone who was anyone was Why? wearing my pizza shaped shoes. They had put all the money in my bank account for me, and now I was filthy rich. Eventually, I was able to leave the hospital. I couldn't wait to get to work, but the doctors had told me me, I couldn't rush into anything. I still needed to rest. It was about three weeks later that I eventually took over the running of the business from mom and dad. At first, everything was fine, but then things started to go wrong. Why? I couldn't understand it. I was running things exactly the same as mom and dad had done, but we were losing money. It wasn't that noticeable at first, but then it got worse and worse. How? Sales were dropping, and I knew that if things didn't change soon, then the business would be bankrupt. It's almost like people don't want to wear pizza for shoes. I mean, it's really cool that her mom and dad were able to continue the business business while she was in a coma, but I don't know how long they expected this pizza shoe business to last. It didn't make any sense. What was I doing wrong? I asked mom and dad to meet me at the warehouse. For the sake of the company, I need to resign, I told them. Can you two take over running the business again, please? Wow. Yes, of course we will, said mom. And you will get the same percentage of the profit, said dad. Enough for you to live on. I found a small house. It was all I could afford with the money I was receiving from the business. The house was run down and it wasn't in a very nice area, but but I would be okay. She lives in a pile of rubble, but she'll be okay. I just didn't leave the house in the evening. It wasn't a safe area for a girl to be out at night alone. Beggars lined the streets and homeless people slept in doorways. It was actually quite depressing. I sat watching TV what one evening. What the heck? Isn't that the girl from The Ring? She's coming out of the TV. This house is really not a safe place to live, is it? It was a message from Samantha. I hadn't seen her since I stopped working in my business. Every time she suggested meeting up, I managed to come up with an excuse. I told her I was busy or not feeling very well. Awesome. This message was the same as all the others. She wanted to come and see me, but I couldn't let her see how I was living. I was so ashamed. I ignored her message, but then she started calling me. I knew I couldn't put her off forever. You can't just start ignoring your best friend. That's how you quickly become not friends. She wouldn't take no for an answer. Eventually, I answered her call. Tina, finally! I've been trying to get in touch Aww. with you for ages, said Samantha. I want to come see you. I gave Samantha the address and told her to come over. About 30 minutes later, there was a knock at the door. I opened it, saw Samantha standing there. Come in, I said. Samantha came in and looked around her in astonishment. Why are you living like this? She asked. You have a huge business making lots of money. 
I explained to Samantha that I had resigned from my business. I told her all about how since I had taken over the running of it, everything had gone downhill. She looked at me sadly. I have something to tell you, Tina, said Samantha. Wow. I didn't want to say anything because I know you were close to your mom and dad, but now that I see how you were living, I have to tell you. When you were running the business, your parents were sabotaging the sales on purpose. What? They wanted the company back for themselves. Could it be true? Will my parents really do that to me? How does her best friend know this? That's what I want to know. But there was no other explanation. I knew what I had to do. I wanted to get my revenge, and I knew exactly how I was going to do it. What my parents didn't know was, whilst I was working on my parents, a shaped shoe business, I was also working on another business idea. What I was, was going to expand into oh, fruit no. shaped shoes. She's got the banana shoes! Who's also buying those? Is there someone out there who has a collection of weird food shaped shoes? Because I want to meet them. I would take on my parents with a rival company. I started heck? working on my new line, banana shaped shoes, <laughs> apple and orange shaped shoes too. I found a new warehouse on the other side of town and opened my new company. Didn't the parents say that they were still going to give her the same cut of money? even if she left the business? Because doesn't that mean she would have got the same amount of money? Surely the parents wouldn't want to sabotage that. Who knows? It wasn't long before everyone was wearing yeah, my new fruit-shaped sure shoes. Nobody wanted pizza-shaped shoes anymore. Yeah, fruit cool. shoes were the latest trend. Yeah, it's all about the fruit shoes these days. I knew I had ruined my parents' business, but they deserved it. I was successful once again, and I had one person to thank for it, my best friend, Samantha. If she hadn't told me the truth, I wouldn't have opened my new company. I decided I would take her out for dinner. I called her and asked her to meet me for dinner that evening. When I got to the restaurant, Samantha was sitting at a table. What's the occasion? She asked, and I sat down next to her. I wanted to treat you to dinner to say thank you, I replied. If it wasn't for you, I would never have opened up another business. Now I'm even more successful than before, and my parents are paying the price. Samantha smiled at me. Oh, that's what friends are for. Are they friends or are they lovers? Because the way that they look into each other's eyes and hold each other, it's giving girlfriends. I felt so lucky to have Samantha for a friend. Aww. I knew she would do anything for me. The next day, I was in my office when my phone rang. I looked to see who it was. It was Dad ringing. Oh, no. I answered the call and listened as Dad told me how worried he and Mom were. He told me that the business was really bad. Their sales had been dropping and dropping over the last few weeks. I felt sorry for Dad and was starting to feel a bit guilty that I had caused him all this worry. But Why? then I remembered what they had done to me. Tina, we can't afford to pay you any money at all this month, he said. Our new competitor has wiped out our business. We are barely making enough money to survive. If only they knew that it was their own daughter who was their main competitor. Little did Dad know that it was his own daughter that owned his rival company. That he was on the phone to his competitor. Oh it's okay, Dad, I understand, I said. When I put down the phone, I laughed. To myself. Oh my gosh, Who cares evil. if I didn't get any money from my parents? I had a successful business of my own. A few days later, I was at my warehouse working on another fruit shoe design when my assistant came and knocked on my office door. There is someone wanting to see you, she said. Okay, send them in, I replied. I looked up and was shocked to see my parents standing in the doorway, <gasps> but they looked even more shocked. Tina, what are you doing here? They're gonna find out about the fruit shoes! Oh no! What's she gonna do? She has to admit it. She has to admit that she wanted to take down the pizza shoes. Don't tell me you have a job with our competitor. No, I said. I haven't got a job working for your competitor. I am your competitor. Oh my! What are you talking about? Asked Dad. Why would you open up a business to rival your own parents? I think we need to have a talk, I replied. Sit down and I will explain everything. I told them how I knew about all their attempts to sabotage my business when I was running it. I thought they would deny it, but instead they admitted to what they had done. We only did that because we got an anonymous tip that you were planning to kick us out from the business, what? said Dad. But I would never have done that, I said. If it wasn't for you two, I wouldn't even have a business. You have to believe us. Look, I still have the message. Anonymous tip? Don't tell me it was the best friend. She would never. Mom opened her phone and showed me the message. It was true. Someone had sent a false message telling them that I was planning on firing them. Fake message, it says, Woo ha ha ha, blah blah blah, fired, fired, ha ha, fired, fired. Me he he fired evil words evil words me he 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 that is a truly shocking text but who would do that i looked at the number the message had been sent from and my heart went cold no way i know whose number that is i said it's samantha that sent you the message why would samantha do such a thing i was so upset and angry samantha is the secret saboteur i have to go and speak to samantha i told them i need some answers i went straight over to samantha's house when i got there i knocked hard on the door and she knocked hard on the door so hard that she knocked the door off its hinges. A few seconds later, Samantha opened it. Hi, Tina, come in, she said. I followed her into the lounge and sat down. 
I was shaking so much I could hardly get the words out of my mouth. Can't I can't believe, believe this. what you have done to me, I said. Samantha looked at me. I thought at first she was going to deny it all, but then she realized from my face that She's I evil. everything. Why would you want to destroy my life? I asked. Because you have everything. She's scary. She screamed, suddenly losing her cool. You have always got everything you wanted. You got the boys that I liked. You got better grades than me. You have your own business. All I do is work eight hours a day in a crummy job. I just want you to know how it feels to fail just for once in your life. I had thought she wow. wanted the best for me. Well, I was wrong. I guess blood really is thicker than water. Her best friend was a backstabber. You know, we should have guessed that from the beginning of the story where the main character got the lead role in a play and her best friend pretended to be happy about it. Well, it just goes to show you can never really trust anyone, but you can trust me. So make sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see another one from me, you can watch one of these right now and I'll see you over there.